we've got the foil drive fusion that has just been released. This is the biggest product. So what's happened here on the fusion? The fusion is foil drive's biggest jump yet. More power, longer run time. I'm getting straight up jealous about this foil drive fusion hype. I wish I have one to share the experience and do the review a little bit with you guys, but I do not have one. What I do have is, however, my foil drive Gen 2 Max unit, which is coming up to two year anniversary. And along the journey, I have experienced about six different failures of this unit that I see it commonly occurring in the community. Some of these failures are actually fixed by the foil drive side, but some of these failures are still occurring and I do have some hacks to prevent it from happening to you. So let's get started. The first one to share is the controller failure. This controller has been actually the weakest link in the foil drive system for a pretty long time. It definitely got a lot better in last a year or so, but in early days, this thing has been just a nightmare. Let's take a look on the first one here. Oh, there we go. This is basically after fifth session or so since I got in. Uh, the video was taken on December 15, 2023. So basically brand new unit at that point. It just went into 100% throttle without input at all. This was like definitely the sketchiest failure that I've ever experienced in the foil drive side. Um, yeah, it turned out it's just a sensor problem. They just took it back and sent me the new one. So that was my first failure of the foil drive experience. After the controller got replaced, it has been working okay for a little bit. And then I started to notice the doomed uh, controller spring failure. So earlier version of the foil drive controller, the controller throttle spring was really weak. So I ended up basically snapping it every other month or so. I just ordered, I think like five or six as a backup and just planned to switch it every month is pretty much how bad it was. Soon enough, the foil drive team fixed the issue by making the controller spring a little bit stiffer. Of course, that is the default option at that point. So ever since then, I actually never snapped this new stiff controller spring. So yeah, definitely kudos to foil drive team for quickly figuring that out and addressing that issue. Then there was one more failure of the remote controller, which was simply the display starting to show the RF error. And there was just no way of getting around with it, similar to the sensor problem. Yeah, apparently that's just one of the transmitter in the uh, unit. And once that just starts to misbehave, there's just not much of the firmware reset or factory reset that you can perform. Um, I looked into it a little bit deeper and the same exact error message, that chip that's getting uh, throwing this error, uh, some nerd actually figured out with like a soldering and everything to reset the unit, but that's way beyond anyone's skill level, I think. Uh, you basically need to have access to the specific chip in this controller, uh, but if you opened it, it's just completely sealed up, so there is just basically no access to it. So yeah, same deal as the sensor problem, if you see the RF error, the only thing you can do is just uh, get the warranty replacement. While we are on the controller topic, there is uh, one of the things that I can mention here. So the foil drive controller by default doesn't actually float in the water. It's a little bit uh, unfortunate because the whole unit is designed to be used in the water. So it would be really amazing if the uh, controller itself, itself just floats by default, but that is not the case. And a lot of these issues that I was mentioning earlier is actually addressed by the new controller that's coming with the uh, foil drive fusion, which will be comparable with the Gen 2 Slim and Max unit too. However, unfortunately, even the new controller doesn't float in the water, uh, but there is actually a quick hack that you can implement. So what I've learned from the Facebook group is 
can just open this up and inside you can just insert the mast track foam pad you don't even need that much just super tiny bit and after that it just starts to float so yeah in case your leash gets ripped off or um, yeah maybe you just like uh, uh, simply like didn't wear the leash or something you don't have to worry about dropping the controller and the controller just sinking in the ocean uh, speaking of leash the Kaohi leash it has been pretty amazing generally However, if you notice here, I actually have the uh, different titanium O-ring for the keyring. Um, the default version was actually just a little metal clasp, uh, which works generally okay. But one time I got cook slammed so bad and the metal class literally just ripped to open and took my controller away, the wave took my controller away. So since that happened, I just replaced the metal class class with the uh, titanium keyring. This has been way solid connection, so I don't need to worry about this ever getting broken and losing the controller. So that is every failure that I experienced with the controller so far. Okay, the second category of the failure is the motor pad failure. Uh, I started to see this occurring a lot more in the foil driver Facebook group, but basically what happens is when you're tightening the motor pad, uh, if you over tighten it quite a bit because the material is just simply plastic and of course the bolt is you know metal so if you're over tightening the bolt it basically eats through the plastic piece and then eventually you just have the hole that's bigger than the bolt so the motor part is not holding on to it anymore uh, I tried to fix it by using some sort of JB weld to kind of like uh, make a little uh, section to hold onto the bolt, but it did not work at all. Yeah, yeah, ended up just needing the replacement. There is actually a hack around here. I have been using the small metal washer. Um, Ideally, I wanted to put it inside of the pod, but it's really, really difficult and frustrating to line everything up perfectly. So I ended up just putting the metal washer on the outside of it. And I think it's still helping. Uh, of course, after I experienced this, I stopped over tightening so much so definitely you know you don't have to crank it down just make sure they don't wiggle uh, it's a little bit tricky because of course you want it to be tight enough it doesn't move around while you're motoring around but yeah you definitely don't want to put excessive torque where it's eating to it common failure number three the latch problem the battery latch problem well, this actually turned out to be the defect on the foil drive side. Uh, I do think my batch was actually the safe one. It seemed like the very first few batches were okay. And then the next few batches got pretty bad. People claimed that it just started to snapping after only few sessions or so. Uh, and foil drive team did figure out there was some sort of the manufacturing defect on some of the batches and then they addressed it, uh, have the more reinforced version of latches and make it stop happening. Um, yeah, but definitely it was kind of like a big reoccurring issue in the community for a little bit, which foil drive team took care of it fairly quickly as well. So kudos to foil drive team once again. Uh, for me, I only broke one latch so far within two years and they already sent me two as the backup uh, on the first purchase. So yeah, I still have one spare laying around. So I think I'm good fingers crossed. Common failure number four is the bearing in the motor. This is actually inevitable at some point uh, because there are three bearings inside of the foil drive motor. Uh, one of them will eventually fail over time. Uh, my tip is Definitely, when you start to notice a little bit of grinding noise or a little bit of a loss of power, stop using the motor immediately and just come out, inspect and replace the bearing. 
I was stupid and dumb enough to keep using the motor after I noticed it in one of my sessions. And what happened is because the now bearing was broken and it, the motor doesn't sp spin perfectly, it starts to shape around the edges of the motor can. So when I came out, I noticed basically there is like a sharp edges developing around the motor can. Yeah, definitely sketchy uh, and yeah, not an ideal situation. Definitely you can minimize the damage by just stop using the motor and actually fix the replace the bearing and then go back um, Yeah, unfortunately a little bit of a uh, downtime because the bearing curing is also like a process that takes over a day um, Yeah, but it is the maintenance uh, one thing that you can do is before you start to using the unit, just give the motor a little bit of a free spin to make sure there is no greedy sound or a little bit of like an unusual sound or feeling. Uh, that's a good cue that bearing is broken or is about to break. So uh, yeah, it's a good check to do before you start your session. Sticking with the theme of the motor failure, the common failure number five that I'm going to share today is the motor hub bolt failure. This one is also addressed by the foil drive team by upgrading the motor bolt parts. They also released a full video deep diving into why this occurred and how they fixed it, so I'll leave the link down below. Uh, in short, basically the original design was a little bit weak, so they improved the whole design. They basically machined the whole bolt just for this motor hub. Uh, that seems to be working so far pretty well. Uh, the annoying part was that the previous version, when it fails, sometimes the bolt can be stuck inside of the motor hub, which was pretty painful to remove if you try to remove. Um, Another part that I can share here is that if you over tighten it, the whole base of the bolt can be bulging out a little bit, which can be pretty annoying to fix as well. So yeah, definitely try avoiding putting too much of the torque in tightening any of these bolts in the foil drive system. Failure number six is my high power battery. Um, I'm sure this is not just high power battery or any of the other battery can experience this too. But uh, one of my session, after the session I came in home and started to charge the battery and then it just simply did not receive the charge at all. Uh, I think what's happening is the foil drive battery charger has the minimum voltage requirement to detect the battery and start charging. And if the cell is the damaged, the foil drive battery pack is of course combination of like a multiple battery cells. And if any of those cells are damaged, then basically the voltage can be a little bit lower than that charger's minimum required voltage, which makes it to stop charging altogether. There are some hacky stuff that you can do to try to revive it, but it becomes a little bit of a fire hazard. And from my experience, once this starts to happen, the battery will be real likely to keep experienced a similar failure so yeah i think it's better and safer to just stop using the battery in my case uh, once again the amazing foil drive support team took care of it and sent me the new one so yeah that is the way to go unfortunately this is a little bit of just lock throw you know uh, there's not much you can do to prevent or anything actually there is something you can do to prevent it uh, try not to use the battery down all the way to 0%. Uh, for me personally, I try to come back out uh, before it ever hit the below 10% range. And that is the below 10% when you're not using the motor at all. So once you're starting to engage the throttle, the reading of the battery capacity on the controller will show a little bit lower than what it actually is. So the 10% number is when you're not using the throttle, that is the ideal sitting battery reading that's a little bit more accurate. Try not to go below 10% is my recommendation. Of course, some of those days you want to squeeze a little bit more out, I understand. But general rule of thumb, try not to use it under 10%. I think that's when this kind of a weak cell starts to manifest itself. So 
yeah, if you're going for the longevity of your battery, yeah, definitely let's not abuse it as much as possible. Now that leads to the final bonus failure. My foil drive fast charger just stopped working. If you're a subscriber of my channel, you might have seen the video talking about the how to achieve the unlimited session time with minimal requirement. TLDR, you just need three batteries, one auxiliary power station, and one fast charger. Um, I have been charging my batteries on the back of my truck. Uh, with that, because I use the foil drive in the ocean, the foil drive battery chargers are actually not sealed well. So I think what happened is basically some of those salty air kind of started to corrode the charger. That is my guess at the moment. Uh, I tried to fix it by opening it up, drying it, cleaning it, reassemble it. It worked a little bit but then it stopped working again. So yeah, unfortunately, another warranty claim on my end. With that, I want to give a huge shout out to Foil Drive support team. Making this video makes me a little bit self-conscious about how much warranty claim that I had to make. Um, I'm really sorry and I really, really appreciate all of your support Foil Drive team. Yeah, this product has been truly life-changing. I don't think I've ever made any better purchase than this one, to be honest. Understandably, the ocean is a harsh environment and being able to have this electrical device that's working in the ocean has been just my mind-boggling and truly amazing too so yeah I'll continuously to be the royal fan and yeah a lot of problems that I've been covering today seems to be already addressed in the fusion unit too so yeah really can't wait to get my hands on one of them yes please keep up the good work thank you so much for your drive team I think that's everything that I have to share today Please leave down the comment if you've experienced any other failures that I didn't get to cover this video or if I misrepresented any of the failures in this video as well. Uh, from last week, I've already learned a lot from your comments. Uh, I shared about the mast wiggle problem that I have in my Cedrus and code foil setup and indeed actually having some tape shim around with it completely fixed that issue. So yeah, really appreciate sharing your insight. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next week. Bye.